All right, continuing with the TSI assessment, basic, basic mathematics sample questions. Um, let's look at some more fractions. We're going to look at multiplying and dividing fractions as well as some fraction word problems. So beginning with number 15 here, we have 8 and 1 half divided by 1 and 2 thirds. Now these need to be in improper fraction format before we can continue, so we're going to go ahead and convert those really quick. Multiply plus. So when we're converting a mixed number to a, an improper fraction, we're going to multiply the denominator by the whole number. So 2 times 8 is 16 and add the numerator. 16 plus 1 is 17. Denominator stays the same. Divided by 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5 over 3. Now, the way to divide fractions, what we're actually going to do is multiply and flip the second fraction. So we're t actually multiplying by the reciprocal or the flip of the second fraction only. And it must be the second fraction. You can never do the first fraction. So we're going to do 17 over 2 times 3 over 5. 17 times 3. It's 51 over 2 times 5 is 10. Now, we need to convert this into a mixed number. So what we need to do is say how many 10s fit into 51. Well, we know that 5 10s fit into 51. That's 50. If we take 50 away from the numerator, we just took out 5 10s, we're left with 1 out of 10 left. So our answer is 5 and 1 10th. Okay, number 16. This is where cross-reducing comes in handy. We've talked about this in our other fraction review. So what we can do is I'm going to look for numbers that can, or uh, fractions that can reduce across the way here. So I see this 5 and this 10 here. Those can both be divided by 5. So this is going to become a 1. This is going to become a 2. Just reducing it as, as if it was 5 tenths sitting there. All right, what else? This 12 and this 4 can both be divided by 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. 12 divided by 4 is 3. And then here we have more that can be reduced. 3 over 9. These can both be divided by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So I'm going to rewrite our new reduced fractions. 1 third times 1 third times 1 half. This is much more easy to deal with than 5 twelfths, 4 ninths, 3 tenths. The shortcut is really helpful. So 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. So our answer is 1 18. Okay, number 17. A rectangle has dimensions of 5 and 3 fourths feet by 2 and 1 third foot. It has an area of and a perimeter of. Okay, so let's talk about this rectangle. Um, we've got, I'm just going to draw it here. You can see this is 5 and 3 fourths feet by 2 and 1 third foot. Okay, so let's look at the area first. In order to find the area, what I need to do is multiply these two numbers. Area. Area equals length times width. So the area is going to be 5 and 3 fourths times 2 and 1 third. Now going back to number 15, what we need to do is turn both of these into improper fractions, then multiply. This is division, but same idea. We still have to convert them into improper fractions. So over back over here, 4 times 5 is 20. 20 plus 3 is 23, and the denominator stays the same. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. Denominator stays the same. Here we cannot cross-reduce anything, so what we just need to do is multiply 23 times 7, which is 161. 4 times 3 is 12. Now to reduce this, we need to say how many 12s go into 161. 
so 161 divided by 12, we need to see what our whole number part of the mixed number is going to be. So 112 can fit into 16, subtract 12, that's 4, bring down the 1. How many 12s can go into 41? 3, that's 36. Subtract here, that leaves 5. So our answer is going to be 13 and 5 twelfths. This is the numerator, this is the denominator. So our area is 13 and 5 twelfths. Now the perimeter we're going to find by adding all the way around. So if we have 5 and 3 fourths here, we're also going to have 5 and 3 fourths here, 2 and 1 third, this will also be 2 and 1 third. So I'm going to bring this up here where we have some extra space. So we'll have 5 and 3 fourths plus 5 and 3 fourths plus 2 and 1 third plus 2 and 1 third. We've added all four sides around. What is our common denominator going to be? Between 4 and 3, if we look at our multiples, 3, 6, 9, 12, 4, 8, 12. So our least common multiple is 12. So that tells us that the denominator, the common denominator for this is going to be 12. So in order to turn 3 fourths into 12, so I need to multiply by 3 over 3. 3 times 3 is 9, and of course 4 times 3 is 12. That's what we're looking for. This is the same thing here. 3 fourths, 3 fourths. This is also going to be 9 twelfths. Now, in order to get the, this one, 2 and 1 third into twelfths, I need to multiply by 4 over 4. So our 2 will stay the same. 1 times 4 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12, which is what we want. And again, this is the same thing. 2 and 1 third, 2 and 1 third. So this is also going to be 4 twelfths. So now they're all the same denominator, we can add them all up. So 5 plus 5 is 10, 10 plus 2 is 12, 12 plus 2 is 14. Then we have 9 plus 9 is 18, 18 plus 4 is 22, 22 plus 4 is 26. 12. Now, this is an improper fraction here, this is not our final answer. So what we need to do is take out one whole, we're going to add it on to this here onto the 14. So this is going to equal 15 and now we take out that one whole. 26 minus 12 is going to be 14 twelfths. We still have an improper fraction, right? So we're going to have to subtract again. We need to take out another 12 over 12. That one is going to be added onto the whole number. So we'll have 16 now 14 minus 12 is 2, denominator stays the same. And then this problem just keeps on going. <laughs> We're going to have to reduce here. So each one of these, um, the numerator and the denominator, can both be divided by 2. So the final answer, the 16 will remain the same. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So the perimeter for number 17 is going to be 16 and one sixth. Just put that there for a second in case you need to check anything out. Okay, so now let's continue with number 18. The following rainfall amounts were noted. March, April, May, June. Okay, what was the total rainfall for our, all four months? So we want total rainfall, which means we're adding all four months. Okay, I always like to circle pertinent information so I make sure I don't leave anything out. Okay, so we need to add one and three tenths plus two and seven eighths plus three and one half plus three fourths. Now, these all have different denominators. So, we need to get a common one. What is going to be our common denominator between 10, 8, 2, and 4? So thinking about this, hmm, I think it's going to be 40. So we can do times 4 here, times 5 here, times 20, and times 10. So.
Okay. one is going to be times 4 over 4 times 5 over 5 times 20 over 20 and times 10 over 10 so we can get 40 in those denominators all right first one 1 and 3 times 4 is 12 10 times 4 is 40 okay looking good so far 2 7 times 5 is 35 8 times 5 is 40. Good. 1 times 20 is 20. 2 times 20 is 40. 3 times 10 is 30. 4 times 10 is 40. So now we're all in 40th, so we can add these all up. So this is going to equal, and we'll go down here for this. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. Then we've got these four numbers here. I'm just going to add them on the calculator so we can keep moving. 12 plus 35 plus 20 plus 30. That's 97 over 40. Now, how many 40s can we take out of 97? And so kind of going back to this one here, we had to do two steps of taking out 12 over 12. So kind of to save us some time, let's go ahead and see how many 40s can we take out of 97? I'm thinking two, because that's going to equal 80. So we can take out 80 fortieths. That's two holes now. That'll go back on here. So plus two. So the answer is going to be eight. Now we do 97 minus 80, the two that we took out to add to the whole number. That's going to leave 17 out of 40. So our final answer here for number 19 is eight and 17 fortieths. Okay. Now, let's zoom out a little bit and take a look at number 20. How many, oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't 19, that was 18. Got ahead of myself here. I'm working in all this space. Okay, so now we're looking at 19. Sorry about that. Okay, so number 19, if three lengths, eight and one-fourth foot each of copper wire are cut off a 100-foot roll of copper wire, copper wire, how much wire is left on the roll? Okay, so we are taking three chunks of eight and one-fourth out of this 100-foot roll. So I'm going to multiply this times three because there's three lengths of those. Then we're going to subtract it from the 100-foot roll to see how much wire is left. Okay, so let's begin by taking eight and one-fourth times three. We can't do this, right? We need to get this in an improper fraction because this is basically three over one. So in order to do that, we say four times eight is 32. 32 plus 1 is 33 over 4 times 3 over 1. This is going to be 99 fourths. Okay, let's get this back into a mixed number. How many fours go into 99? Use my calculator here. 99 divided by 4. So we can get 24 fours out of 99. 24 times 4 is 96. So if we take out 96 fourths, that represents this 24 hole here, we're left with 3 fourths. So now we can take the final step. This is all three lengths accounted for. So 8 times 3 is 24, 1 times 3 is 3. So this happened to work out in this case. Sometimes it doesn't work because of the nature of the fraction. You'll end up with an, um, a number that it's kind of funny, so we like to get them into improper fractions, then multiply. Put it back into a mixed number. Okay, so our next step is taking this away from the 100 foot roll. So we're going to say 100 minus 24 and 3 fourths. Well, there's nothing here to subtract from. So what we need to do is borrow from this 100, it's going to become 99. And what we're going to do is add one hole in the form of the denominator that we're dealing with. So this is going to become 99 and 4 fourths because together these would equal 100. This is 1, this is 99. Now minus 24 and 3 fourths. Now we can solve this. 4 minus 3 is 1, so that's 1 fourth. 9 minus 4 is 5. 9 minus 2 is 7. So number 19 is going to be 75 
and one fourth. This is how much le is left feet out of that 100 foot roll when we took out these um, these three links at eight and a fourth each. Our answer is 75 and one fourth. Okay, number 20. How many? I'm sorry, I'm using that a little bit. Number 20, how many th five and three fourths ounce servings can be poured out of an 80 ounce juice container? So we just need to see how many of this can fit into this. So what we're gonna be doing is division. So we're gonna say 80 divided by five and three fourths. How many times can five and three fourths come out of 80? Now, in order to do this, we need to convert this into an improper fraction so we can solve. So this is going to be 80 divided by 4 times 5 is 20, 20 plus 3 is 23 over 4. This is 80 over 1, any whole number is itself over 1. But if you remember from before, instead of dividing, we're not going to actually divide a division fraction problem, which sounds kind of funny. What we do is flip the second fraction and multiply instead. So our new work is going to look like this. 80 over 1 times 4 over 23. 80 times 4 is 320. 1 times 23 is 23. So now to reduce this down and get a mixed number, we want to say how many times does 320 fit into, to, uh, I'm sorry, 23 fit into 320. And the answer is it can go in 13 times. 23 times 13 is 299. So we're going to take out 299 out of 23. And what we're left with is 21 out of 23. So we took out, this represents 13 whole. So that goes here. Tw uh, 320 minus 299 leaves 21 20 thirds for number, uh, number 20. So our answer here, how many servings can be poured? Not quite 14, right? Only 13 and 21 20 thirds. So only about 13 servings can actually be poured of that amount. It doesn't quite reach 14. All right, if you have any questions, post a comment and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks.